In part one, we learned about treatment-resistant depression and how ketamine is able to help individuals who did not respond to conventional antidepressants. Now, Dr. Rosenblatt will be joining us again to talk about common side effects, treatment predictors, and other disorders that ketamine could be used to treat. Who qualifies for treatment with ketamine? So right now, because it is an off-label treatment, um, the availability in Canada is fairly limited. Uh, the main clinic in Canada that is providing this treatment is the Canadian Rapid Treatment Center of Excellence, or the CRTC, uh, which I'm the medical director of. And so we have our inclusion criteria based on the research and our clinical experience. So the large majority of the clinical trials have been specifically for treatment-resistant depression, meaning depression that has not gotten better with other treatments. Um, and uh, so that's our our inclusion criteria. So certainly ketamine is being researched for a bunch of different things, uh, but to receive it through our clinic, you would need to have a history of either bipolar depression or unipolar depression, uh, as well as having a history of trying a number of medications and unfortunately not getting better. Um, suicidality would be another key target of the treatment. So if you have treatment resistant depression, you're really struggling and having suicidal thoughts, um, then uh, you would be likely to qualify uh, for, the, for the treatment through, uh, through the clinic. And uh, importantly, everyone needs to be referred uh, where you would still need you know, a family doctor or a psychiatrist involved in your care. Uh, it wouldn't be that you're just kind of directly going for ketamine because it is still experimental and there still are other options to, to explore. Are there any factors that would make an individual more or less likely to respond to treatment? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, the short answer is uh, none that are uh, particularly convincing or well replicated at this point. Um, and this is another unique difference of ketamine where for antidepressants in terms of conventional antidepressants, there are a lot of predictors that would reduce the chances of you responding to the treatment. For example, if you have a very significant trauma history, if you have a personality disorder, if you have tried electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, and that hasn't worked, all of these things would be con considered negative predictive factors for you responding to conventional antidepressants. Uh, but the data thus far has suggested that these are actually not great predictors, where even for people that have had electroconvulsive therapy, have difficult histories of trauma in their childhood uh, or have comorbid uh, personality disorders, meaning personality disorders in addition to their depression, um, those don't seem to negatively predict the chances of ketamine working for you. Um, there certainly is a lot of research in this area, and there's been uh, some small studies that suggest, for example, body mass index might be a predictor of uh, improved outcomes or a family history of alcohol use disorder, these somewhat esoteric factors where we're still not sure if they're spurious associations or actually true associations, um, but it is, a, it is a work in progress. Um, one other one that's particularly uh, controversial and unclear right now is the importance of the dissociative experience, where some people um, had initially thought that having that dissociative experience was actually the active ingredient to have the antidepressant effects. But the more recent research has suggested that whether you have a profound dissociative experience or not, that's not really the active ingredient that determines if you have an antidepressant effect. Um, and that's been my experience as well, uh, treating hundreds of patients where it doesn't seem to be that the dissociative experience predicts if someone's going to have the antidepressant effects or not. Um, so the long and short of it right now is that um, we still are working on it, but it doesn't seem that there's any uh, key predictive factors that would predict if someone responds or not. Um, I know you did mention bipolar disorder and depression for the treatment. Um, are there any other mental health disorders that it could be used in? Or is it being researched in any other fields? Yeah, absolutely. So it's being researched in almost every field of, uh, of mental health and, and in, in neurology right now as well. Um, uh, often when a treatment comes along that uh, has very large effects, we want to see does it work for other things. And there is a lot of this repurposing in psychiatry where we try to see um, uh, do the medications work for other indications. So there's ongoing studies for PTSD, for anxiety disorders, for OCD, for substance use disorders. Um, and there is promising results thus far. Uh, but uh, again, the only ones that have been very convincing is the uh, treatment of depression and suicidality, uh, whereas all these other ones would be considered exploratory, so not really ready for prime time just yet. Um, but what I've seen is for people that have multiple disorders, for example, if you have depression plus PTSD, uh, for a lot of people, um, uh, their PTSD symptoms would also improve along with their depression. And it kind of makes sense where we have these boxes that we put people in in terms of diagnoses, but there's so much overlap in the neurobiology 
uh, of these treatments don't make sense. So um, I don't believe that, you know, ketamine is this panacea, holy grail that's going to cure everything. And certainly even with depression, it doesn't work for everyone. It works for about 50 to 60% of people, uh, but certainly very promising that it might be an important uh, treatment available for depression as well as other, uh, other issues. Do you have any advice for individuals who might be thinking they have treatment resistant depression? Yeah, so, so I think the, the, main, um, uh, the main things to know is uh, it's really important to ask for help and, and don't be ashamed. Um, there are treatments out there. It's very common in treatment-resistant depression for people to feel really ashamed and to feel that I'm not getting better just because I'm a bad person or there's something wrong with me. Uh, but just like any other medical condition, treatment-resistant uh, depression is a medical condition that certainly is difficult to treat, but there are treatments available. Ketamine is one of those options, but there are many other uh, options available for treatment-resistant depression that could be considered. Um, so taking that step to, to get help, which uh, usually would be you know, calling a helpline or reaching out to your family doctor or reaching out to your psychiatrist if you have one uh, and talking to them about different treatment options. But um, certainly if you have treatment-resistant depression, you're not alone. This is a very common uh, diagnosis um, and uh, I would strongly encourage you to, to reach out and get help.